you guys were not. I, I, oh, you were. You were in. Uh, actually, you were in our preseason. I was in Portland as well. <laughs> I want to cover playoff hockey in Vancouver. I want the fans to enjoy and experience playoff hockey in Vancouver. I want the Canucks to win a Stanley Cup for this city. And looking at Raptors Twitter right now, a fade for Cade. I feel like a lot of them are, are, are you know, would, would love to see, would love to see him there. I mean, I'm not advocating for that, but I mean, I know that's that's big on Raptors Twitter minds these days. There's a lot of t- a lot of Twitter warriors out there. LA gave one out to you. To, uh, to Jared Goff, and they've already moved on. Correct. They didn't think that that could work. So. It's all good. It's in it. It's in the box. It's in the box. Okay. For the unnamed sports show, here's your host, Joshua Griffith. Hello and welcome to the Unnamed Sports Show here on the Sports Talk Line Network, where we talk sports 24-7, 365. I am, of course, your host, Joshua Griffith, as the Vancouver Whitecaps stadium voice, Don Andrews, so graciously announced. And again, thank you to the matinee for the wonderful introduction music. Today on the Unnamed Sports Show, episode 62, we are going to be staying in the world of football or soccer, as we like to call it here in North America, and continue along with the Vancouver Whitecaps as their winning streak moved along to four games and their unbeaten streak moved to 10 with a nice two one come from behind victory over Austin FC last Saturday night. So Austin got off to the uh, the early lead in the first half, scoring a late goal in the 45th minute. Sebastian Jerusi was left wide open and got a header down. But Vancouver was able to respond thanks to an Eric Godoy header in the 70th minute before Deber Casado got on the end of a rebound from a Ryan Gold shot and was able to put it away. And Vancouver Whitecaps were in the winning column once again. So today on this show, I'm going to be joined by Florian Youngworth, who uh, has since becoming uh, Vancouver Whitecaps on August 6th, it quickly rose to one of the fan favorites and media favorites. So was really excited to chat with him. We chatted for about 15 minutes. Uh, the topics range from football to music to food to pretty much everything. So uh, I'm really excited about this. This was a a really fantastic interview. But of course, if you've seen the show before, and if you haven't, well, we got some things to take care of. We got some housekeeping to take care of. So like the video down at the bottom, subscribe to the Sports Talk Network if you haven't already. Make sure to follow me on Twitter at Joshua Griffith Zero for the latest Whitecaps and basically all sports news and updates. We got tons of sports going on. September and October are great for sports. So Make sure to follow me and follow the Sports Talk Line Network at www.sportstalkline.com. So we got that stuff taken care of. Um, We talked about the Whitecaps victory. We'll talk about the Whitecaps next game after we get into this interview with Florian Youngworth of the Vancouver Whitecaps. All right, so I'm joined now on the Unnamed Sports Show by Vancouver Whitecaps defender Florian Younger. Flo, thanks so much for joining me today. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Obviously, after that win and the Cascadia Derby upcoming, it's only good to feel excited. Yeah, a couple of things I wanted to talk to you about. Um, how was training today? How are, how are the How's the team looking this week? Uh, yeah, we're doing good. Obviously, still have a couple of injured players. Not a lot changed. Uh, due to last week, a um, couple guys with national teams, they're playing tonight. And, but the atmosphere is great. Obviously, we have a good run. We have finally a chance to go above the line, not only for a couple of minutes, to stay there at least for the weekend. And that's obviously a big, big goal. Yes, that will be good for you guys. Um, so, you know, you mentioned the national team. You guys are going to be having a watch party as a team you're gonna be uh you know cheering on some of your national the uh the, your team players as they play for their national teams no my wife would slap me if i would watch <laughs> <laughs> enough football it's uh quality time with wifey but obviously i will watch results lineups and cheering cheering for the guys without well, watching it i love how you have your priorities straight and that's great to hear um so you know you're obviously traded to the white caps on uh, august 6th uh, and you seem to be come very comfortable with the squad very quickly um what was that like for you making the move 
Um, yeah, of course. I mean, the move was really uh, literally on the last day in the last hours of the transfer window, but I knew a couple of weeks before that maybe something might happen and I had a little time to, to study the team, study the philosophy, the style of play, the club. And I, I was convinced if the transfer is going to happen, it, it might fit really well. And when I came here, the team uh, welcomed me really nice. Everything was quick. I know I had not, not much time to adapt because we're during the season. So it had to work out quick. So no time to fooling around, messing up. And so far, so good, I would say. Well, you seem to be a bit of a fan favorite in your short time. And you definitely are a media favorite as well, as it was very hard to book you. Apparently, there was a couple other people also looking for your uh, your interview this week but uh called bribery you know That's it's called well i have to uh, i have to make sure that i get that in check with nathan and uh, yeah. get my bribes my baskets a that's you bit. covered i'm sure <laughs> so um i noticed that you made a nice friendship already with ranko vasilinovich um he had some very nice things to say about you really like, well, what yeah. did he say quote 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 I want to quote oh okay i used one in my last article uh which i with me said it's, it's really comfortable having a nice veteran presence and it just allows him to play comfortable uh, veteran sounds so old always you know but no it, uh, it's nice i'm um, like i said team uh, welcome me great and I want to give back uh, with my experience, like like Ranko mentioned. Uh, I think I'm a couple of years in that business now, so uh, I think I can judge uh, situations very well. And I know I am a player with a lot of power, with a lot of energy, and I always try to you know bring that in to the guys to distribute it. Sometimes it works so good, sometimes not that good. But in the end, I always have uh, good intentions, and, and I'm happy to get a, a feedback like this so far. Yeah, good intentions and, and really good passion. I mean, one of the things I noticed about you after your good goal, I mean, obviously, besides it being a brilliant header, was that you, yeah, and uh, you didn't mess up the hair either. Uh, yeah, true. But one of the things that you went right for was the crest. You went right for the crest and gave it a big kiss as you were running towards the fans. And that it was... Oh, it's so funny. Honestly, like... Uh, I always was laughing about players who do that because I'm like, come on, stop this shit. And it just happened out of emotions. I don't know even why I did it, but it was just, it felt like, you know, the last weeks were a lot of stress and a lot of pressure. And, you know, then you moved on the last day. Uh, obviously, I, I've been four and a half years in San Jose. So it's obviously it was not that easy. Just like, oh, I want to get out of here. No, I felt very comfortable and the moving part, my wife, had a lot of stress, the dog. So a lot of things were in my mind and then it felt like it just burst out of me, you know, and yeah, just a lot of uh, emotions, a lot of joy came out and then was a kiss. So usually I, like I said, I'm, I'm joking about <laughs> players, but um, it was just the way I felt in that moment because the welcome was really such nice and it, it, it just feels that it fits well. Well, how has it been back playing in front of the BC Place crowd? I mean, obviously, we've been waiting for, for a while. It's been a long time coming for fans here in British Columbia to get to watch live sports again. Uh, what did you think of the atmosphere in the three games so far? Very good. You know, I always enjoyed playing here, um, especially in 2017 when the team had a really, really strong season. I remember we played the playoff game where they slapped us bad, 5 <laughs> nothing. I don't remember the result that well. wasn't that wasn't in my notes. I wasn't gonna yeah, bring that no. one up. And I, I remember we played two weeks before, so very crucial game for us for the playoffs. And I think they had the chance to be first in the standings. So I remember the atmosphere was really electric and, and really good. And you felt like you know, when we played LAFC, you felt that it's been a while and the fans were just excited and, and happy to be back. And so far, we, we provided three wins out of three. So I think uh, fans are pretty happy with us too. And we want to build that momentum, want to extend our streak. And obviously, we, we need the help of our fans. No, and very exciting for fans so far. So I'm speaking with, uh, with Florian Youngworth uh, of the Vancouver Whitecaps here on the Unnamed Sports Show. So you haven't been in the city for long, but like you said, the, you know, the fans have shown you a, a nice response so far after the three wins. How are you liking just Vancouver as a city in general? Oh, I love it. I mean, I've been here before, obviously, with the with playing. Yeah. I remember we spent a couple of days here once because we had back-to-back -back travel and we had a little time to explore the city. And 
I right fell in love and I was and my wife was uh, with a friend here too for a couple of days and we were always like if we move some days there may be like two three teams and two three cities where we would really hyped up and Vancouver was on top and so far we're enjoying it we're enjoying the nature restaurants we went out for kayaking already had a trip to Squamish so really really nice so far and I yeah can't wait to to explore more oh that's awesome um I know you, you know, you kind of talked about it a little bit at the beginning, but the big derby match against Portland, you know, you kind of had rival matches, obviously at with San Jose. I mean, rival week, I guess for some time you guys were against Vancouver, which didn't really make sense, but no, no not really. But okay. Hey. MLS, you know, needs to needs to buy sell their stuff, so it's okay. Hey, I enjoyed it. And like you said, I enjoyed the matches too. So and um, but you got a big one against Portland coming up on Friday what's the feel of the organization of the squad? Are they really excited about this? Because I know fans, this is one they don't like to lose. You know, yeah, you feel it's it's a little special atmosphere in the locker as well. And like you mentioned with San Jose, we had that games against Galaxy, was that rivalry. And you felt, you felt it during the week and you had it always in your mind. There's no better feeling than beating the rivals, smashing them bad and... <laughs> Friday is a big one. And having that uh, Cascade Derby at home, is it's big. And I think the last time was two years ago that uh, there was a Cascade Derby at BC. And yeah, it's it's huge. And we really want to to share a win with the fans. We really want to give them uh, this victory because we know it, it means a lot to, to everyone who has a couple of feelings for the club. I know the supporters groups get up big for this one. So hopefully we... Uh... We'll see something uh, from them and then from you guys on the field. So, yes. Flo, I uh, I don't want to take up more, you know, too much more of your time. I jokingly said we'd have 45 minutes to an hour, but uh, <laughs> I know you got lots of that would things. cost extra for sure. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be a bigger bribe next time. But I do want to do some fun questions to kind of help sure. Vancouver Whitecaps fans get to know you a bit better. All right. So I know you are a huge animal lover. Is that right? Do you have any pets? I have three dogs and yeah, my wife and I, we, we support a lot of animals and animal organizations. And my wife works for a Spanish rescue dog rescue and also other pet rescue center there. And she does a lot of uh, yeah work there. So obviously our, our love or our share of love we can give uh, the animals gets the, the biggest part. That was, that was a really cool part of uh, doing some research about you that I had to find out. So uh, you're in a great spot for having dogs, lots of places to go and, That's true. and That's explore true. with them. So. They demand a lot so far. <laughs> 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 um, so what is one of your, your favorite, what's your go-to meal? My what? Your, your favorite meal, your favorite food. Favorite, uh, pizza, but a real pizza, not like US pizza because that's just garbage. I'm talking about like, Italian pizza, thin crust, you know, fresh stuff on top. Yeah. Not like when I, when, you know, someone, first, I remember first time I came to California, they were like, hey, man, you got to try that pizza. It's the best pizza in California. And man, I almost spit it out, to be honest. <laughs> like, you thought, that's not a pizza. That's like garbage for 20 bucks. In Europe, you pay like eight bucks and you get a masterpiece. So I hope uh, I find some good pizza places in Vancouver. I'm, I'm surprised Vanny... And- hasn't pointed you out to a good pizza place, but um, I'll, I'll do some searching and uh, I know some, some people and I'll, I'll try and find a, a, a spot for you that has a really yes. nice That's Italian good. pizza. That's good. But it's yeah, my favorite food when I can handle it and have my cheat day. It's usually a good pizza. <laughs> okay. So uh, what's the favorite stadium you've ever played in? Favorite stadium, uh, Signali Duna Park in Dortmund. Um, played a couple times there, obviously in front of the wall, behind the goal, just behind the goal, 25,000 fans. I remember we played with Darmstadt there, it was like 80,000. And in the last minute of the game, we scored the equalizer. And that was one of my greatest moments in my career because we silenced the whole stadium. And that was just, just brilliant. That's funny because you are the second guest on my show that has mentioned that as their favorite stadium. Mm-hmm. Marcel Dijon also mentioned that as oh, okay. His- Favorite. Yeah, he played, he played that too, right? Yes. So. Yeah, so he also mentioned that as, as one of his favorite scenes yes. to play it. And that just, yeah, that wall. Wow. Um, Great. Okay, so on the opposite end, what's your least favorite stadium you've ever played in? Ooh, 
least for <laughs> Pacific, <laughs> Pacific couple of weeks. <laughs> um, I don't know if you can call it a stadium, but oh, the pitch was, I mean, fans were good, but the pitch was rough. I felt like, oh man, my body cursed me out. Even after warm up, I had pain everywhere the field was, without taking any excuses for the result, but that was, that was brutal. Uh, um, but yeah, other than that, I don't really know. I, I would say there's one stadium. It's not a bad stadium, but it's like, it's called Aue. They're in second division and fans are really bad, you know, like, I don't know. You say like, brother, in that area in Germany, we say. I remember we had derbies there. They threw like vegetables on us and everything. <laughs> so really, but at least, you know, healthy stuff. At least it's like yeah, a carrot or something. And and that's one of the reasons why I always ask that question is because I I some of the things yeah. and some of the stadiums that people have had to play at, it's just like that okay, was you, always you wouldn't believe it. And Nate, if uh if we need to edit that out, let me know. Uh don't worry. Um a couple more first. So I saw you were bumping some Kanye on your Instagram story when you were uh rolling around Vancouver the other day. What are uh what kind of music do you listen to? Uh you know, like I don't have like a special direction, just listening to all, you know, it depends on the mood. I, yeah. I'm a little bit into country now. I like that, but I, I'm, I love Backstreet Boys. Nice. I've been 2019. I've been to four concerts in one year. <laughs> oh, no way. Yeah. No I, kidding. No. I'm, a, I'm an InSync fan. I like InSync a Ooh. bit more, but I do, I do appreciate that. Backstreet- over. See you, man. <laughs> but i could i can probably sing all of the the backstreet boys songs that's good all right. if they came on so yeah no i'm 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 here for you for that one so uh a couple more who who's in charge of the music in the locker room since you've got here no a lot a lot of guys here you know everyone i think right. lucas right. cavallini always takes charge a lot but uh yeah we have different music what i like because in san jose we only had uh spanish music 24 <laughs> seven, uh, you know, I like Spanish music, but not for the whole time. So there were lots of fights about uh, who should be in charge for the music, but yes, yeah, really friendly, good mix. So perfect, perfect music. Well, uh, Flo, thank you so much for joining me. You know, you've been such a blast with us uh, media during the, the post game interviews and, you know, sending the media booth in a, in a riot laughing after some of your answers. So it was uh, great to get to chat with you one-on-one and, Catch white cap fans up with uh with the real flow, the young, sexy, vibrant flow. That's where I'm at. And and also too, we're gonna leave it here, but you are younger than me. Really? Yes. Wow. Now so, I feel bad because you look way younger than me. No, I, you I don't feel- have to feel bad. We just both look, I'm just pointing out that we both look really young and vibrant. Yeah, that's true. We shouldn't okay. even have a driver license yet, I think. <laughs> there we go. I love it. Okay, well, Flo, thank you very much. You have a great day training and um Best of luck this weekend in the Cascadia Derby. Thank you. Cheers. All right. So we are back and I hope that everyone really enjoyed that interview with Florian Youngworth as much as I did. Like I said, we, we pretty much shouted everything and there was uh, some stuff that we couldn't chat about. So, but uh, it was such a blast and looking forward to getting more of him in the, the media availability at post games and uh before games and stuff like that. And when we get more into media scrums, which hopefully will be allowed at some point, but the Vancouver Whitecaps get back into action on a Friday, a September 10th against Portland Timbers in the uh, Cascadia Derby. So that will be nice that uh, fans get that one back. Cause I know it's always a, a big one in the South Siders and Curva Collect, the rest of the supporters groups are always uh, big into that. So looking forward to that. And hopefully the White Caps can extend their winning streak to five matches. They will be without Jake Nowinski and Christian Gutierrez once again. They're still dealing with injuries and rehabilitating. Um, Maxine Cropo and Lucas Cavallini will be evaluated when they return from the Canadian men's national team after hopefully a, uh, three points. And that's pretty much it for the injury front. So Vancouver should have some time now with, uh, you know, just to two games in two weeks. So, Hey, fingers crossed that we uh, have another Vancouver Whitecaps victory to celebrate. 
So that about wraps up this week's episode for the Sports Talk Line Network. This has been the Unnamed Sports Show. I have been your host, Joshua Griffith. And remember, love sports, all sports.